the Dalai Lama said he regrets working with the CIA, and yeah, it was the biggest mistake they fucking ever made. That kind of this shit. is this is my buddy. Realize, 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 uh, and 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 the in the background. I need to bring uh, at some point uh, if if realize, realize, realize ever wants to do a guest editorial about China. Uh, Rob and I, we have a fun little, uh, I don't know if it's a disagreement or not. I mean, obviously Rob is much more rock solid in his opinions about China than uh, I am. I, I admit, uh, the only part of China that I really uh, am concerned about as a doomer is the you know, their environmental, ecological footprint on this planet, and particularly the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. So I admit, guys, I don't have nearly the, uh, the knowledge background of uh, that, that my buddy here does about uh, what's really going on uh, with China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Tibet, and of course what's really going on between China and the United States, which is, uh, you know, obviously the, the big thing. I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Rob might be right. I, I, I am not ruling out that real lies real eyes, real lies, real lies is 100% correct. That any sort of China bashing you read in the mainstream media is, uh, is nothing but American imperialism propaganda. Uh, Caitlin Johnstone would probably agree with Rob. I don't know that th it, this is any bad talk about China. Is, is propaganda. Anybody who believes one bad word about China has been propagandized. Maybe I've been propagandized. I don't know. I've been listening to this propaganda. And, and I admit that most of my, uh, my limited education on China comes from the mainstream media. So anyway, we're going to dive in. Since several people, have, I notice, have dropped comments about this, I just decided I would make this the chronicle of the collapse for Tuesday, October 5th, 2021, and you will see more and more and more articles. This is The Guardian, you know, from England. Uh, you know, The Guardian is not exactly, I don't know, the Washington Examiner. Uh, okay, so The Guardian Mm, might be a little bit less propaganda, but it almost is, is irrelevant uh, for the subject of, of war between the U.S. and China. I have always said, I will continue to say, that where the war between the U.S. and China is going to break out is the South China Sea. I've been saying this uh, for years now, and every day I get more convinced that that is going to be the flashpoint for World War III is the South China Sea, but we're going to have some test cases. And the first test case between U.S. and China, between this little, uh, you know, this little game of chicken that these two nuclear superpowers are, are having is going to be Taiwan. Uh, China is going to test the U.S. military's uh, chest beating with Taiwan. And, and once the U.S. military, as they need to, sits back and uh, lets them have Taiwan back, or as Rob says, Taiwan, China's not taking Taiwan back because they never, uh, they, they, they never gave it away. You know what I'm saying? So the first domino that's going to fall is going to be uh, Taiwan. And then once nobody does anything about that, then they're going to go back and uh, take back or whatever words you want to use. Uh, Hong Kong is going to be the next one. Tibet, I was just talking with Rob about Tibet. 
don't know. As long as the Dalai Lama is still alive, uh, China's not going to mess with Tibet. But once uh, the Dalai Lama goes on to wherever Dalis go, uh, that will be the next test case. And uh, assuming that uh, the U.S. doesn't, uh, the, you know, doesn't, you know, throw throw any punches, uh, then we will get to the real litmus test, which is what it's building up to, which is the South China Sea. But that'll be a rant for I don't know five to ten years from now. But uh, this is the Guardian. As I say, who I trust as much as anybody in the in the mainstream media, wow, <laughs> this is real. Sky is blue. This is actually an opinion piece by retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis. Okay, so this is one of these military analysts uh, coming up with the uh, with, with the brilliant statement. Wow. Never would have thought this. The U.S. must avoid war with China over Taiwan at all cost. Mm, do you think so? That the U.S. must avoid war with China over Taiwan at all cost. And of course, you could say uh, Hong Kong, Tibet, and we will see about the South China Sea. So anyway, for uh, the Chronicle of the Collapse for today, according to this dude. <clears throat> is this Western propaganda or isn't it? I don't know, guys. Since last Friday, the People's Republic of China has launched a total of 155 warplanes, the most ever over four consecutive days into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. Uh, Ned Price, whoever that is, said the State Department was, quote, very concerned. Hmm, do you think so? There have been more than 500 such flights through the first nine months of this year as opposed to 300 all of last year. And someone just left a comment that they flew 77 warplanes uh, over, you know, in Taiwan's claimed airspace uh, yesterday. I don't know, so I, I don't know if this uh, 155 uh, includes yesterday's uh, alleged 77 Chinese warplanes. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Before war comes to the Indo-Pacific and Washington faces pressure to fight a potentially existential war, American policymakers must face the cold, hard reality that fighting China over Taiwan risks an almost certain military defeat, mean, meaning for the U.S., and gambles we won't stumble into a nuclear war. Uh, I Okay, my prediction is this skirmish will not result in a nuclear war. Uh, it won't result in any war. Uh, I, we will see. How naive I am, I guess. <clears throat> Bluntly put, America should refuse to be drawn into a no-win war with Beijing. Do you think so, brother? It needs to be said up front. There would be no palatable choice for Washington if China finally makes good on its decades-long threat to take Taiwan by force. Either choose a bad, bitter-tasting outcome or a self-destructive one in which our existence is put at risk. Uh, by our, 
I don't know if he's talking uh, about America or whether he's talking about the planet. Uh, not sure who uh, our is in this uh, context. <clears throat> The prevailing mood in Washington among officials and opinion leaders is to fight if China attempts to conquer Taiwan by force. In a speech at the Center for Strategic Studies last Friday, the, de the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Kathleen Hicks, said that if Beijing invades Taiwan, quote, we have a significant amount of capability forward in the region to tamp down any such potential. Close quote. I think I, uh, I think I will include this quote in Saturday's Hopium Roundup. Uh, yeah, right, lady. All right, getting back uh, to this dude. Okay, either. Hicks, you know, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, is unaware of how little wartime capacity we actually have forward deployed in the Indo-Pacific, or she is unaware of how significant China's capacity is off its shores. But whichever the case, we are in no way guaranteed to, quote, tamp down a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Uh, <laughs> kind of like chipmunks talking about uh, tamping down a Sancho Panza in invasion of the woodpile. Yes. <clears throat> Earlier this year, Senator Rick Scott and Representative Guy Rechenthaler introduced the Taiwan Invasion Prevention Act, <laughs> which uh, Reichenhaler said would authorize, quote, the president to use military force to defend Taiwan against a, a direct attack, close quote. I love it. The Taiwan Invasion Prevention Act authorizes uh, President Joe Biden to use military force to defend Taiwan against a direct attack. There you go. In the event of an actual attack, attack there would be enormous pressures <clears throat> to fast track such a bill to authorize Biden to act. We must resist this temptation. Yeah, so I guess that, that has not been authorized technically by Congress yet. As I have previously detailed, there is no rational scenario in which the United States could end up in a better, more secure place after a war with China. The best that could be hoped for would be a Pyrrhic victory in which we are saddled with becoming the permanent defense force for Taiwan, costing us hundreds of billions of dollars per year and the equally permanent requirement to be ready for the inevitable Chinese counterattack. The most likely outcome, you know, of China invading uh, Taiwan, the most likely outcome would be a conventional defeat of our forces in which China ultimately succeeds despite our intervention at the cost of large numbers of our jets being shot down ships being sunk, and thousands of our service personnel killed. But the worst case is a conventional war spirals out of control and escalates into a nuclear exchange. That leaves as the best option something most Americans find unsatisfying, 
Well, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I guess they did not, uh, these pollsters did not stop by Bugs in a Jar Farm. That leaves the best option something most Americans find unsatisfying. Refuse to engage in direct combat against China on behalf of Taiwan. Doing so will allow the United States to emerge on the other side of a China-Taiwan war with our global military and economic power intact. There you go. Uh, we will... <laughs> uh, anyway. It would take Beijing decades I don't know where this quote. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I got out of line and getting back on the on track. Okay, that is not to suggest we just stand passively aside and let China run over Taiwan with impunity. The most effective course of action for Washington would be to condemn China in the strongest possible terms. Yes lead a global movement that will enact crippling sanctions against Beijing, oh yes, and make them an international pariah. China's pain would not be limited to economics, however, yeah, uh, <laughs> for, for, for the U.S. To, uh, <laughs> to declare an economic war on China. Uh, yeah, I, I think China doesn't make most of our doesn't it make most of our semiconductors uh, those little uh, chips that are in our weapons of mass destruction that without China sending us these chips we would have no weapons of mass destruction uh, and have you ever have you been to the Dollar Tree? Uh, recently, have you gone through your house and seen everything made in China, such as this pair of Dollar Tree glasses, this computer, this camera? Uh, Sancho Panza, were you made in China or not? Are you a made in China little dog? Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> It would take Beijing decades to overcome the losses incurred from a war to take Taiwan, even if Beijing triumphs, and of course, as it would. The United States and our Western allies, on the other hand, would remain at full military power, dominate the international business markets, and have the moral high ground. Yes, the United States <laughs> would have the moral high ground to keep China hemmed in like nothing that presently exists. Yes, Xi would be seen as an unquestioned aggressor even by other Asian regimes and the fallout against China could knock them back decades. Imagine what that would, uh, that would put the Dollar Tree out of business, so within 15 minutes. <clears throat> Our security would be vastly improved from what it is today, and incalculably higher than if we foolishly try to fight a war with China. All right. Publicly, publicly, Washington should continue, I, I love this term, to embrace strategic ambiguity. There you go, I love that term, strategic ambiguity, publicly, but privately convey to Taiwanese leaders that we will not fight a war with China. That would greatly incentivize Taipei, which is, you know, capital of Taiwan, to make whatever political moves and engage in any negotiation necessary to ensure the perpetuation of the status quo. The blunt, 
hard reality is that a Taiwan maintaining the status quo is far better than a smoldering wreck of an island conquered by Beijing. The only way the U.S. could have our security harmed would be to allow ourselves to be drawn into a war we are likely to lose over an issue peripheral to U.S. security. In the event China does take Taiwan by force, Washington should stay out of the fray and lead a global effort to ostracize China, helping ensure our security will be strengthened for a generation to come. All right, so who is Daniel L. Davis and who am I to argue with Daniel L. Davis? Daniel L. Davis is a senior fellow for defense priorities and a former lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army who deployed into combat zones four times. He is the author of The Eleventh Hour in 2020 America. So if we were in the eleventh hour last year, I'm not sure what hour we are in this year. I think we're one, are we 100 minutes to doomsday? I think people who watch this kind of stuff, I think we're 100 minutes to uh, doomsday. So we're not quite into the 11th hour and 59th minute. But anyway, guys, that is what uh, this dude has to say about the situation. I don't agree with uh, 100% of that, but uh, obviously uh, <laughs> uh, the, the U.S. should stay out of that mess. And uh, so my guess is they will take Taiwan and uh, you can wait for the China bashing propaganda to uh, go into overdrive with the uh, United States taking the moral high ground. Yes, uh, talking about China. Uh, <laughs> I I I anyway, I, I, I love when all of these planet eaters uh, talk about taking the moral high ground. But speaking of moral high ground, I have to uh, get up to the Piney Woods campground before the next uh, thunderstorm rolls in to uh, start digging a foundation for the new tiny house. Uh, maybe I, as long as I'm up there, maybe I should just dig a bomb shelter instead of a, we're gonna make a tiny bomb shelter uh, in the hill behind uh, Bugs in a Jar. Do you wanna go dig a tiny bomb shelter for the collapsed little dog? I highly suggest you get out there and build your tiny bomb shelter while you still can. Bye, guys. All right. Let's talk about China. Let's talk about yeah, chippies. Done by, uh... All right, this is, before I turn the camera off, all right, come on in here. No, no, no. no. no you don't want to, you, you don't want to go on, on record? I'm good. All right. I have to turn the camera off before I uh, before I listen to the analysis of uh, realize 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 is convinced he's going to sell me and as I say I uh, I, I I respect this man's opinion I very much respect this man's opinions on on virtually every other subject so uh, anyway <laughs> bye guys.